Welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodious. My name is Azalea, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another update to my Luna Light deck. So without further ado, let's just get right into this. Um, first of all, we are playing three copies of Luna Light White Rabbit. Now, White Rabbit, uh, when you normal summon her, you can special summon a another Luna Light monster from your graveyard to your side of field and face up defense position. Um, so she basically helps us uh, minimize the cost of fusion summoning by getting something from our graveyard. Um, kind of like a mini Coach Soldier Wolf Bark. Now, her second effect is a little mini giant Trunade. So you can target spell and trap cards that your opponent controls up to the number of other Luna Light cards that you control and return them to the hand, which means that um, she's going to be the target of a lot of negation. Things like Effect Veiler, Solemn Strikes, Solemn Warnings, um, because she, if, if she bounces up back rows and you have a, a pretty decent hand, you're probably going to be OTKing that turn. Um, okay, so next off, we are playing three copies of Luna Light Black Sheep. Now, Black Sheep... Um, Two really good effects. Uh, first of all, uh, you can discard her to add one Luna Light monster from your graveyard to your hand. Normally, you're going to do this uh, to add back something like a blue cat, so you can pendulum summon it to double the attack of a fusion monster that you already have on your field. Um, that does come up sometimes, but not as much as uh, discarding her to search a polymerization from your deck, uh, which is uh, really nice because obviously polymerization is the main fusion spell for this archetype. Now, if she is uh, sent to the graveyard as a fusion material for a fusion summon, you can add to your hand uh, one Luna Light monster um, from your uh, graveyard or your extra deck to your hand. So she just helps recur uh, cards to help us minimize the costs and to help maintain advantage for um, fusion climbing uh, the ladders from Cat Dancer to Panther Dancer to maybe perhaps even Leo Dancer. Okay, so next off, we are playing three copies of Lunar Light Blue Cat. Now, Blue Cat, floater of the deck. So if she's destroyed by battle or by card effect, uh, you can special summon a, another Lunar Light monster straight from your deck. Um, doesn't matter about the level or anything. So uh, she tends to hold off OTKs and big pushes from your opponent, which is really nice. Um, and when she's special summoned, uh, you can actually target another Lunar Light monster that you control and double its original attack. So she's really great for helping you push um, and uh, go for OTKs, especially with your fusions like Cat Dancer and Panther Dancer. Now, it's important to keep in mind that she is a level 4, so she is basically going to be the rank 4 enabler of the deck, uh, allowing you to go into a bunch of toolbox options that uh, help us uh, provide more utility for the deck. Okay, and in conjunction with a blue cat, Luna Light Tiger is absolutely amazing. Um, scale 5, so you can pendulum summon blue cats uh, with, with this card if you have it up with, um, with uh, Luna Light Wolf, which is scale 1. Now, uh, Tiger has is basically a double monster reborn in one, so her pendulum effect allows you to uh, special summon a Luna Light monster from your graveyard, but its effects are negated, it cannot attack, and it's destroyed during the end phase, which is fine, because if you do uh, get a blue cat back, um, you can have it uh, be destroyed during the end phase, and it can float again, um, so that's pretty good. Uh, but most of the time, when you bring something back, you're going to go for an overlay, um, or you can bring back Black Sheep and go for a fusion plays, so she's just brrr, so much utility. Um, now, her monster effect, um, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or by card effects, so in the monster zone, in the pendulum zone, doesn't really matter, uh, you can target one Luna Light monster in your graveyard and special summon it with no restrictions attached, so you can still summon things like Cat Dancer and Panther Dancer, and they can still attack that turn, which is awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, three copies of that. Definitely, definitely recommend three. Nothing less, because <laughs> um, she does help recur a lot of uh, advantage. Okay, so next off, we're playing one copy of Lunar Light Wolf. Uh, she is a scale 1, so 1 to 5 can Pendulum Summon the Blue Cats from your hand, which is always good. Um, but she is a Miracle Fusion in the Pendulum Zone, so uh, you can banish Lunar Light Monsters from your field or your graveyard to Fusion Summon a Lunar Light Monster from your extra deck, which is really nice. Um, but normally, you're going to do that uh, late game when you're trying to go for a big push for game. Uh, you don't really want to see this early game, so I only play one copy. Uh, and her uh, monster effect comes up sometimes if you summon her off blue cat, which is normally how we're going to summon her. Um, but uh, it says, if a Luna Light monster you control attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. So this helps if your opponent's walling up or has some stall cards up, uh, everything's a defense position. We can still go for some massive amounts of damage. Okay, so next off, uh, we're going to the Odd Eyes card. So we're playing two copies of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Uh, Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon is a level 7, so it helps us go into uh, rank 7 plays. It's also a dark, so it's a um, 
It's a target for Allure of Darkness that we can uh, banish if we don't need it in our hand. Uh, and his Pendulum Scale effect allows us to search uh, during the end phase for a, mo a Pendulum Monster with 1500 or less attack. So you can search things like Lunalite Tiger or um, the next card, which is Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon, which is really nice. Um, helps us complete scales, helps us set up for next turn. Um, and it fuels our extra deck, so we can go for a big Pendulum Summon. Uh, its monster effect um, is kind of nice, especially now with DDDs out. Um, so if this card battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled, which means that if they have a Kepler on the field, you can attack with the Odd-Eyes Pendulum Dragon and inflict like 5,000 damage right off the bat to them. So that's always nice. Okay, so next off we play uh, two copies of Odd-Eyes Mirage Dragon, uh, the one I was talking about earlier. It's a scale 8, uh, really good card. Um, in the Pendulum Scale, uh, what you can do is if an Odd-Eyes monster on your side of the field is destroyed, uh, you can destroy uh, the other pendulum, the other card in your pendulum scale. So let's say this was a Lunalite Tiger here. Um, if Odd-Eyes was destroyed, you can destroy the Lunalite Tiger in your other scale, and um, then you can activate the Odd-Eyes Pendulum Dragon from your extra deck back into that scale. And then uh, Tiger, since she was destroyed while she was on the field, you can get back any Lunalite monster that's in your graveyard. So um, really helps... Uh, really helps you uh, stay in the game and it's really unexpected because people don't really see this card very often and they don't know what it does so uh, just a little you, little tip and trick I guess there uh, it's monster effect never really comes up so that doesn't matter but it is a dark so it is also an allure of darkness target which is nice Oh, and because it has a pendulum scale of 8, um, if you have it in conjunction with Lunar Light Tiger, a scale of 5, so 5 to 8 allows you to pendulum summon both Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and Lunar Light Wolf if uh, your wolf happens to end up in your extra deck. So that's always a nice little interaction there as well. Okay, so next off we play one copy of Dragoons of Draconia. Um, I really, really, really love this card uh, from when I was playing it in the Performa Pal build. And so... I found out that like you know having a scale two, a pendulum scale of two, is really great utility for the deck because Tenki can search this card. So if you have um, the scale two and you have like a Luna Light Tiger in your other scale, then you can pendulum summon uh, level threes and fours. So you can pendulum summon Mirage Dragon, Tigers, and Blue Cats, uh, which is really nice. And um, if you do draw into it, it's also Beast Warrior type monster that's a level four. So you can go for a variety of rank four plays, or even go for uh, Brotherhood the Fire Fist Tiger King. Um, and get another tanky, which is really nice. Okay, so next off we are playing two copies of Maxi. Now Maxi, um, because this deck likes to go second, it's really nice to have this in your opening hand, so you can get a couple draws off, and um, hopefully your opponent doesn't set up a huge massive field that you can't play over. Uh, so that's what Maxi is there for, it's, it's a little deterrent. So, yeah, that's it for the uh, monsters. Next off we're going to go into the spell cards. Alright, so for the spell card, starting off with three copies of Fire Formation Tenki. Now, Tenki is the rota for the deck, so we can add any level 4 or lower Beast Warrior type monsters from our deck to our hand. Um, and while this card is face up on the field, uh, all Beast Warrior type monsters gain 100 attack. Um, it does come in handy sometimes when we uh, need that little bit of a boost to attack over our opponent's stuff. It really does help our fusions out. Um, but yeah. Uh, next off, we're uh, more consistency cards. We're playing three copies of Allure of Darkness. Now, Allure of Darkness um, has a lot of synergy with this deck because we're also running the Odd Eyes engine. So uh, you can always search an Odd Eyes monster and then play Allure of Darkness and banish that Odd Eyes monster if you don't need it. Um, you can also banish things like extra copies of White Rabbit, but you really do want to avoid banishing things like Black Sheep and Blue Cats because those are the cards that you want to keep recycling and looping uh, in order to gain your advantage and make your plays. But everything's situational, um, <laughs> it really depends on what, what you have uh, on hand and on field at the time. Okay, so next up we play two copies of Polymerization, the main uh, fusion enabler uh, card of the deck. Um, allows us to go into all of our fusion plays. Uh, along with one copy of Fusion Substitute, I know some people don't like this card. You can play a third Polymerization in place of this, but um, I really do like recycling our Fusion Monsters and getting that extra draw sometimes is really clutch. So um, I like it. And especially because we play Starving Venom, but only one copy, you can always put the Starving Venom back and most people won't expect like a second Starving Venom to be coming out late game. Uh, okay, so next off we're playing two copies of Fusion Recovery, uh, really good card to top deck uh, late game, basically allows you to go uh, plus one. Okay, so next off we play uh, 
well, two copies of Sky Iris, um, the card that searches our Odd Eyes cards, the four that we play. Um, so Sky Iris, it also allows us to trigger our Blue Cats and our uh, Lunar Light Tigers because uh, you can target one card that you face up card that you control uh, and destroy it to add one Odd Eyes card from your deck to your hand. So you can destroy the Blue Cats and the, or the Tigers, and they just help generate uh, massive amounts of advantage like this. Sky Iris has a loop with uh, Tiger and Blue Cat and Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. So those four cards uh, help sustain a lot of rank 4 plays every turn. Okay, so next off we play two copies of Terraforming, just in case uh, we, you know, <laughs> we need to uh, have an extra copy of Skyrus in our hand. I really do hate opening Terraforming and Skyrus, but um, Terraforming does help bring out the Skyrus a little faster, uh, so that's nice. Uh, next off, we are playing two copies of Luna Light Perfume. Um, you can play three, but I found it to be a little bricky in this build. Um, because you don't want to see it uh, in your opening hand. This uh, Lunar Light Perfume um, doesn't set up plays, it extends our plays, essentially. So that's really uh, what it's there for. Um, really good card though, it's a Monster Reborn, and it's not none of the effects are limited to once per turn. So um, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then discard one card from your hand, and also search. But we already have three tankies, so this isn't really needed at more than two right now. Um, maybe in the future, when we get our uh, other support like Kaleido Chick, um, we're going to need three copies of this, because it will be more of an enabler uh, than it is right now. Okay, so next off we play some back row removal in the form of Twin Twisters. Uh, I still like Twin Twisters over MST in this deck, because... Um, uh, we like to go second a lot, so if you're going second and your opponent has a lot of back row, it's always nice to clear it out. And the discard really doesn't matter because Lunar Lights have so many ways of bringing cards back from the graveyard. We have three White Rabbits, uh, three Tigers, and two Perfumes, so not a problem there whatsoever. And last card for the deck, we play one copy of Upstart Goblin for that consistency boost. So, yeah, that does it for these spell cards. Uh, next off, we're going to go into the side deck. Alright, so for our side deck, starting off with two copies of DD Crow. Now, DD Crow is uh, is a dark monster, so we can use it as a target for Alert of Darkness if we uh, need to. But more importantly, it is really good against things like Zodiac Beast, because if you hit the rat in the graveyard, um, the rat combo that everyone does with Zodiac Beast for your engine, um, it requires three copies of Rat in circulation. So if you hit the DD Crow, it really uh, kills their grind game, and it also stops things like Digusto Emerald from going off. Uh, so this is just a really nice card to have sided. It's also good against things like Blue Eyes and even Metal Foes, because you can snipe their uh, Metal Foes Fusion, uh, so they can't shuffle it back into the deck and uh, draw cards and such. So really good, versatile card. Okay, so next off, running two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, another hand trap, uh, which is really nice. Um, so during either player's turn when a monster effect on the field activates, or when a spell trap card that's already face up on the field activates its effect, you can discard this card and uh, destroy it. Now, Ghost Ogre doesn't negate the effects, but it doesn't really matter, because normally we're going to be using it against things like... Um, the Metaphos Pendulum Scales, uh, but this is also really good against DDDs because you can uh, destroy their Dark Contracts, you can destroy uh, Genghis to interrupt their combos. It's just uh, really good overall right now. Okay, next off we are playing two copies of Jinzo because this deck doesn't really like traps and um, if you're running into things like Paleozoics and stuff, it's always nice to have a Jinzo. Um, you can even Pendulum summon this card because it's a level 6. Uh, if you have a scale of uh, Tiger and a Mirage Dragon, you can actually Pendulum summon your Jinzo. But um, the deck also has enough ways to special summon and avoid using the normal summon that you can just tribute over something that you special summon back with like Tiger's Effect or with Perfume or something like that. So Jinzo is just really good and just shuts down all of our opponent's uh, traps so that we can go safely and attack for a game. Uh, now, uh, last monster in the side deck, we play three copies of Radian, the multi-dimensional kaiju. Uh, I play Radian because it's a dark monster. Its attack is a bit high, but it doesn't really matter. Um, dark monster uh, means that we have more targets for a lot of darkness, which is really nice. Um, and it's really good spot removal as well. Just tribute over our opponents like Crystal Wings or Siegfrieds or Harbingers. Anything that might hinder your play for the turn, um, just tribute over it and uh, go off from there. Now, uh, it's also pretty easy to attack over. Um, it is 2800 attack, but with Blue Cat and with things like Panther Dancer, it boosted by a Tenki, uh, brings her up to 2900, so we can, we can bypass that little uh, hurdle right there pretty easily. 
Okay, so going into the spell cards, we play one copy of Pot of Acquisitiveness. Because we're playing three copies of Lore of Darkness and playing Lunalite Wolf, uh, Acquisitiveness just allows us to shuffle things uh, from our Banish Zone back into our deck, which is kind of nice. It's also good against things like ABCs because you can target your opponent's stuff as well, shuffle it back and disrupt their plays um, so they can't keep making Dragon Busters every turn. So that's always nice. It's, so it's like a utility and an enabler for our own deck. Okay, so next off, we play one copy of Black Garden. Move this card to the side because um, in some matchups, you don't really want to see Black Garden, and drawing it kind of sucks uh, <laughs> if you don't need it uh, that turn. So I decided to side it. This is really good against. Um, so at my locals, there's uh, some players who play Yosenju, and Yosenju don't leave their monsters on the field. So what I do is I play Black Garden, give my opponent tokens, and then attack the tokens for game so that. Um, yeah, it deals massive amounts of damage uh, that way. So I really like Black Garden in that regard. And it also fills the board with tokens, so if you really wanted to, and you're going first and you have Black Garden, you can set it up, combo off on your first turn, just fill up your opponent's field with a bunch of Rose tokens, and then they can't do anything on their turn. So that's always nice. Okay, and then um, because we like going second, we need ways to f uh, wipe the field. So we play two copies of Dark Hole and one copy of uh, Raigeki right here. So three um, field wipes. Uh, I don't main deck these because, well, really couldn't find the space to, but it isn't really necessary game one. Usually games, uh, game two, you know, your opponent will like to go first and you can side in all of these forms of removal. It's really good against things like DDD, it's good against things like Metaphos, it's good, it's good against things like Blue Eyes. Uh, just wipe the field of big monsters or at least use it to bait your opponent's negations before you try to go off. And last but not least, capping off the side deck, we play one copy of Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Uh, really nice little tech, and you contribute one dark monster with 2,500 uh, or more attack, and choose spell cards tra or trap cards, and then you check your opponent's hand, all spell and trap cards that they control, and all cards that they draw for the next three turns. <laughs> and you destroy all spell or trap cards among them. So, um, if, you go if you're going first, you're setting up. If you have um, Panther Dancer or Starving Venom, you contribute those off for this. Um, but... Uh, even more importantly, if you have a Cat Dancer, she's 2400 attack, but boosted by Tenki's 100, becomes 2500, and you contribute her with Eradicator Epidemic Virus as well. So, yeah, that does it for the side deck. Uh, next off, gonna go into the extra deck. Alright, so for the extra deck, starting off with one copy of Sky Calvary Centauria. Now, Sky Calvary, rank 2 monster that we're typically going to make with a white rabbit and a black sheep. Um, really good utility because it is non-targeting, non-destruction removal. Um, when this card has XYZ materials, it cannot be destroyed at battle. And at the end of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can return detach one material from this card and return that monster back to the hand. So it's really funny when you can bounce things back like Chaos Max and uh, other typically uh, quote-unquote unbeatable boss monsters, right? <laughs> okay, so next off, um, going into the rank 4s, we play one copy of number 80, Rhapsody in Berserk. Now, if you don't know what this does, um, you can detach one mat uh, XYZ material from this card to banish one card in your opponent's graveyard. Uh, but you can use this effect twice per turn. Um, so what you can do is you can detach two materials to banish two cards in your opponent's graveyard, and then its other effect allows us to attach itself to another XYZ monster that we control and increase its attack by 1200. So um, it actually helps... Um, if you have another XYZ on board already, you make this, banish two cards, attach it to something, and make it a large beat stick. That's really difficult for your opponent to get over. Uh, 1200 attack is nothing to laugh at, especially since most of our XYZ monsters have over 2000 attack already. So that's always really good. Okay, so next off, we play one copy of Evil Swarm Nightmare. Nightmare is such an amazing card, and it requires two level 4 dark monsters to summon. Uh, so you can always overlay two uh, blue cats for this. Now, uh, its effect is that when your opponent would special summon in monsters, except during the damage step, you could detach one XYZ material from this card and change that special summon monsters to face down defense position. Um, now, it is not once per turn, uh, which means that, you know, if your opponent tries to bait it out, you can just flip it face down, if you're, and then your opponent has to deal with it again. So, Pendulum Summons, XYZ Summons, Synchro Summons, Fusion Summons, Ritual Summons, um, this card just is a huge, huge deterrent, um, and basically requires your opponent to have enough plays to play around it, um, or else it's just going to Book of Eclipse everything that your opponent tries to summon, which is really cool. 
Okay, so next off we play one copy of Diamond Direwolf. A uh, very good utility in the deck because everything is a Beast Warrior type monster in the main deck. So um, instead of popping itself like most players would, uh, you can pop your Blue Cats or your Luna Light Tigers instead, um, and you can save its other material for another turn. So that's always really nice. I'm normally going to use the pop face down cards or like other problem monsters on the field. Um, yeah, so next off we're playing one copy of uh, Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer, speaking of removal. Um, and Diamond Dire Wolf can also pop this uh, because it is a wing beast type monster. Um, so after you use Castell's effect, you can always Diamond Dire Wolf pop this and something else your opponent controls. So that's always nice. Okay, next off we play one copy of Brotherhood the Fire Fist Tiger King. Uh, Tiger King, when it's XYZ summoned, you can set one fire formation spell or trap card from your deck uh, straight to your side of the field. So normally we're going to be setting things like uh, Tenki. But if you're teching a Tensu, you can also set the Tensu, so that's always nice uh, utility there. Now, Tiger King, you can detach one XYZ material from this card and negate the effects of all monsters on the field that are not Beast Warrior types. So it's a like basically a temporary skill drain uh, so I really do like that effect a lot um, and it lasts until your opponent's end phase so um, you know you can negate something and even if you can't attack over that monster that turn they, they can't use their effects so that's always nice um, next off we were going for uh, one number 39 utopia and of course number s39 utopia the lightning uh, just to attack over many problem monsters without activating effects um, you know if your opponent has has uh, crystal wings, uh, you can always at attack over it with lightning and then go off during main phase two. Okay, so next off we play one copy of number 11, Big Eye, to cap off the XYZ monsters. We play two copies of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, and uh, next I'll show you guys uh, the fusions, but we do play uh, two copies of uh, Luna Light Cat Dancers. So all of those are level sevens, and overlaying them into Big Eye, Big Eye really does steal games sometimes. Uh, so yeah, um, that does it for the XYZ monsters. Next off, going into the fusions. So for the fusion monsters, starting off with one copy of Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. I really, really do love this card so much in this deck. Um, it requires two dark monsters that are on the field uh, that are not tokens. So normally we're going to be using uh, White Rabbit and Black Sheep uh, for the summon. Uh, and it has three really good effects. So if this card is fusion summoned, you can make this card gain attack equal to the special summon monster that your opponent controls until the end of this turn. So this can actually end up becoming larger than like Utopia the Lightning at times. If your opponent controls something that has over, um, you know, uh, what was it, 2200 attack? Yeah. So it's not too uncommon for this to go over 5000 attack points. Um, its second effect is that you can target one level 5 or higher monster that your opponent controls. Uh, until the end of this turn, this card's name becomes that opponent's uh, monster's original name and replace this effect with that monster's original effect. So this card is actually really funny because you can, you know, steal effects from your opponent. Like, um, if your opponent has uh, Crystal Wing or something and you already baited it out, well, now you have a, a Crystal Wing for a turn, um, essentially, with this. And I really do like that effect. It, it's so gimmicky, but it's so... It comes in clutch sometimes, <laughs> despite it being so situational. And its last effect is uh, if this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect, um, you can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. And the important thing about this is that it does not have to be sent to the graveyard. If this card is destroyed and your opponent has a dark law on the field, doesn't matter. Uh, if you get bottom list, you know, you still nuke the entire field that your opponent controls, which is really nice. Okay, so next off, going to the Luna Light Fusions, we are playing two copies of Luna Light Cat Dancer. Now, Cat Dancer, first level of the fusions, uh, requires two Luna Light monsters to summon. She cannot be destroyed by battle, and if you tribute another Luna Light monster that you control, you can attack uh, each of your opponent's monsters twice each. So, really good, um, but the uh, more important fusion of the deck is definitely going to be Luna Light Panther Dancer. Now, she is of course harder to summon because you require one Luna Light Cat Dancer and then another Luna Light Monster. So, um, you need to make Cat Dancer first in most cases and then go for the Panther Dancer, but Panther Dancer doesn't require a tribute um, to attack everything twice. You can just activate her effect during the main phase um, to attack everything twice and then go into the battle phase and go for damage. Now, Panther Dancer, um, pretty much the boss monster of the uh, deck currently, um, because we don't have things like Kaleido Chick and Crimson Fox um, that really help Leo Dancer shine. Um, oh, and by the way, Panther Dancer cannot be destroyed by card effects. 
Now speaking of Leo Dancer, Leo Dancer cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. She is a 3500 attack monster, massive monster, uh, and she is really powerful because she can attack twice during each battle phase. And um, if she destroys a monster, uh, you can activate her effect to um, destroy all special summon monsters that your opponent controls. So basically, you're going to be clearing your opponent's field after a single attack, and for your second one, you're hitting your opponent uh, directly for 3500. If you boost Leo Dancer up with blue cash, she actually becomes 7000 attack, so there's almost nothing in the game that she can't attack over, really. Uh, and that does it for the um, fusions, and that does it for the extra deck. So um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Lunar Light content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.